Okay, well, so welcome all to the December 14th meeting of the Planning Commission 2021. If you'll join me uh, in standing for the salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Roll call. Chair Barbe? Here. Commissioner Doan is absent. Commissioner Paul? Here. Vice Chair Rainey is absent. Commissioner Ramirez? Here. Commissioner Serrato? Here. And Commissioner Weiler? Here. Great. All right. So uh, the action minutes of the meeting from October 12th, it seems like a long time ago. Any comments? Review? Seeing none, I'd make a motion to approve the minutes of October 12th, 2021. Commissioner Ramirez seconds. All right, thank you very much. Okay. We Are there any the written communications for today? Uh, we need to do the vote for. Oh, sorry. There's okay. a, vote, a vote on the minutes. Uh, Chair Barbe? Approved. Commissioner Paul? Yes, approved. Commissioner Ramirez? Approved. Commissioner Serrato? Yes, approve. And Commissioner Weiler? Yes. Five to zero to approve with two absent. Thank you. Um, I do want to make a note. Um, I was reminded to ask everyone to speak clearly into the mic because apparently there have been complaints and issues around audio being able to hear well. So when you do speak, please speak directly into the mic. Thank you. Um, so the minutes are approved. Written communications? There are none. Future neighborhood meetings? None currently scheduled. None currently scheduled. And oral communications? None at this time. And there are no public hearings tonight, so we will launch right into current business. The current business items are, the first item is the general plan housing element status report presented by our newest senior planner, Good evening, Chair Barbe, Commissioners. My name is Veronica Morona, Senior Planner. And tonight I will be providing you an update on the city's housing element and to discuss the processes triggered by the housing element update. Um, the housing element update sets in motion the requirement by the state of California to update the city's community protection chapter within the general plan and create a new environmental justice element. So tonight's presentation will provide background on the three general plan elements, housing, community protection, and environmental justice, and provide a status update on this process. Staff will also outline a general timeline for this process of the concurrent work effort. And then finally, staff will receive input from the Planning Commission, including any resources and or direction on community outreach and engagement. So city staff is currently working on the six cycle housing element, which is for the eight year planning period of 2021 to 2029. And the city council adopted the housing element at the August 11th city council meeting. However, staff received comments from the California Department of Housing and Community Development, also known as HCD, one day prior on August 10th. Council adopted the housing element on August 11th to ensure the city was within the time frame allotted by the state to adopt the six cycle housing element. Um, but staff is currently working to address the outstanding comments from HCD with a target of late spring for adoption by council of a revised housing element. So an update to the six cycle housing element triggers the requirement to update the city's community protection chapter of the general plan, which fulfills the city's requirement of a safety element. Additionally, the state requires the creation of an environmental justice element when two concurrent updates to a jurisdiction's general plan occurs. Since staff is currently working to update the housing element as well as the safety element, also known as the community protection chapter, 
Um, staff will also now work on creating an environmental justice element. These three updates will be one current concurrent work effort as the three documents are interrelated. For the community protection update, staff will address topics including fire hazards, climate adaptation and resiliency strategies, and evacuation routes as required by the state. Since the document was last updated in 2012, staff will also work to update any cleanup items and ensure maps are all up to date as well. For the environmental justice element, a new chapter in the city's general plan will be created that is dedicated to the goals, objectives, and policies surrounding environmental justice. To clarify, environmental justice, as defined by the state of California, is the fair treatment and meaningful involvement of people of all races, cultures, incomes, and national origins with respect to the development, adoption, implementation, and enforcement of environmental laws, regulations, and policies. The environmental justice element will identify environmental justice communities within the city based on a number of factors directed by the state as well as local knowledge from the community and existing policy documents such as the Climate Action Plan. The environmental justice element will identify objectives and policies surrounding the required topic areas to reduce the, the unique and compounded health risks within environmental justice communities by means that include, but are not limited to, the reduction of pollution exposure and by the promotion of public facilities, food access, safe and sanitary homes, physical activity, and civic engagement in the public decision-making process. The environmental justice element will also identify objectives and policies that prioritize improvements and programs that address the needs of the city's environmental justice communities. So what does this concurrent work effort look like? So this slide shows a general timeline for the overall process beginning last month, November 2021. Staff will work to coordinate, draft, and begin early engagement now through January 2022. By the end of January, staff aims to have an outreach and engagement plan to utilize through the concurrent work effort. Ultimately, staff intends to focus primarily on finishing the housing element in the first half of the year with an anticipated late spring council date for amendment and adoption. Once the housing element is certified, staff will then focus the remainder of the year on the community protection update and environmental justice element. The goal for those two documents is fall winter of 2022 for adoption. Staff's goal for the concurrent work effort is for the community outreach and engagement to be ongoing through the entire year with strategies based on where we are in the process. So currently we are in the kickoff period, which includes internal coordination with other city departments and external coordination with, city, with stakeholders, excuse me. And staff is also working on a draft community outreach and engagement plan for the work effort and to preliminarily identify environmental justice communities within the city. And that concludes staff's presentation, and I am available for questions. Mr. Weiler. All right. Uh, thank you, Ms. Marones. Um, I have a question on uh, the pollution protection, and what does that exactly entail? Um, is that going to be like mapping that shows where the high pollution areas are throughout the city so that those areas are identified and therefore land use designations may change in those general areas and then kind of as a part of the second part of that question will we be using like modeling techniques or will they be actual measurements made sure so great questions thank you commissioner weiler so the state does provide direction to jurisdictions on how to uh, identify environmental justice communities. Um, they refer to the um, Cal Enviro Screen 4.0 mapping system, which takes into account pollution burden as one of its criteria. So staff would primarily be looking at established data by outside sources, such as the State of California Environmental Protection Agency, rather than conducting our own analysis of air pollution and uh, implementing models such as that. Okay. Th thank you. And it was more just out of, out of curiosity than anything, but I appreciate that. Thank you. I, I have no more questions. I have a question. Um, so within the CAP, the Climate Action Plan, the, the EJ communities, so to speak, that are identified there are through the Cal Enviro screen, as I recall. Um, 
and those communities are identified in the, I believe, in the, in the what you call it, the climate action plan itself. So I imagine that'll be used as a, a good reference there. And that that is based on the pollution load as well, right? So. Yes, so the Climate Action Plan priority investment neighborhoods are built off of, I think, several different factors layered into the CalEnviro screen 3.0. So since that was conducted, there's actually a newer set of data available that's been, um, it's now the CalEnviro screen 4.0 iteration. So we'll definitely, staff will be reviewing that. Um, but the state also provides guidance on other factors such as median income values um, and also directs jurisdictions to utilize local knowledge as a means for identifying EJ communities. So it's going to be a very multifaceted process that includes bringing in climate action plan data as well as other um, points of reference that the state directs. Right. Okay. And I heard the other day that uh, Oceanside is actually integrating EJ into all of the elements of their general plan, which I thought was a really interesting approach. And I think that was because perhaps they haven't updated their general plan in quite some time. But that was, is that true? Do you know? So I'm not, I'm not up to date on their EJ standing at this point, but uh, I can tell you that the state does give jurisdictions the option to either integrate environmental justice policies into the existing general plan elements or to create a standalone environmental justice element. Uh, staff has, staff thinks it's most prudent to create a standalone document so that it's easily, it's very easy for the general public to find and identify all of the environmental justice policies and objectives and programs associated with our general plan instead of Instead of integrated, yeah. Right. Um, but I do know that Oceanside's doing a comprehensive general plan update currently, so. Right. That was, that was my understanding, right? Okay. Because I assume that within a standalone plan, you can also point to various pieces of the, or elements of the general plan to indicate where some of those policies would be relevant, I assume, right? Yes. And I think in some instances, We've, I've been seeing jurisdictions pulling existing environmental justice related policies from other elements and um, listing them within the new environmental justice standalone document as a reference. Right, okay, right. Other questions? Commissioner Paul. Yeah, hi. Um, on your uh, timeline, item number four is community outreach and engagement. And it just says ongoing. Um, I guess I'd like to ask for more detail uh, on community outreach and engagement uh, universally, not 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 just for not just for this item, but if we could have um, more detail on that for for all items going forward. Just a comment more than a question. Uh, and, thank you, uh, Commissioner Paul. Adam Feinstone. Uh, is it on? Yes, it is on. Uh, interim director community development god this thing's all right <laughs> um so we have been discussing both internally within the department and within uh within other divisions or departments within the city the idea of coming up with some more, some sort of a more comprehensive outreach strategy um for this project itself this is something that uh that miss marona is spearheaded she's doing an amazing job at the outreach work she's started um but to continue this through the process for this item is gonna be extremely important, and I hope that it's gonna set a good precedent and a good benchmark for other efforts that the city takes in the future, so. Yeah, thank you, because I was thinking about that. If we had a, if we had a model, you know, right now, I don't, I don't even know where to go on the, on the website or something to look for community engagement activities, and if we had a good model, we could do it for everything, right? Um, and then I had an, another question, and I apologize because I get, could have looked this up myself, and I and I forgot. Under the community protection chapter and the environmental justice element, are those already in our work plan? Oh, I just looked at your work plan this afternoon. I forgot to look at it. So I I don't believe that they are specifically because they came as a uh, as a byproduct of the housing element update itself. So they were not identified at the time we put that work plan together. Uh, it was something that was identified through one of the items that are act, that were on there. So they've kind of been put onto the work plan because of that. I was going to kind of ask that: is, is this was not not 
I don't know, I wouldn't say not planned, but we, this was unexpected. It wasn't anticipated, uh, you know, a year ago when that discussion, I think, of the, of the work plan or maybe nine months ago when that first started, it wasn't anticipated that we'd be going through this exercise. Okay. So, uh, so perhaps we could add it then, too. Thank you. Sort of a build out of the housing element work task, actually, in a way. I'm sorry? It's actually th this, the environmental justice and safety is sort of a result of the sort of building out from the housing element action. Correct. Okay. Any other comments, questions? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Welcome. All right, our second item, uh, business item is street trees and landscaping in the public right of way. Uh, Thank you, uh, Chair Barbet. I'm, uh, I'm not gonna, uh, I don't have a presentation to provide. This is more of an opportunity based on our, uh, our discussion at the last meeting on October 12th uh, regarding certain thoughts on street trees and, uh, and landscaping, et cetera, that could not be entertained at that meeting because it was not agendized. So the purpose of this item is just to have it agendized to open up the forum to the commission here in order to make any uh, comments or provide any input and insight onto uh, trees, landscaping, the urban forest, tree canopies, et cetera, that they may have. So uh, Chair Barbet, I know we discussed this maybe last week, I think it was. So I'll, I'll turn the floor over to you. and. Uh, Take it away. Sure. So um, I think it was really building off also from the presentation that the Department of Public Works pr presented to City Council, where Commissioner Paul also had some observations about the presentation that was given. Um, and I also had some um, concern, not concerns, but sort of observations and comments based on both that presentation as well as uh, sort of a continuing conversation around tree canopy itself for the city. Um, I know that for, for one, um, I was really concerned about the data that was utilized in that presentation because it was, it was 2014 data, as, as I recall, which is the same data that we used in the development of the Climate Action Plan for thinking about trees, tree canopy, and the greening of the city. And uh, I guess my interest is to, to have a conversation or discuss with the Department of Public Works whether or not that, that data set is going to be updated in any time in the future. I, obviously, that will require some funding, which may or may not be available. But just, I was just curious to know what the current plans were for that because uh, and direction. There was direction at the end of that city council meeting by the mayor, I believe it was by the mayor, sort of a general direction to say, well, please focus on heat islands within the city, which coincidentally uh, coincide with the priority investment neighborhoods and the cap. So it wouldn't surprise me if, if perhaps the, the DPW already has plans, and he alluded to that, but he didn't go into any detail about that for um, increasing shade trees and, and structures over bus stops for shade uh, in the priority investment neighborhoods. I think that was a, a point. So perhaps uh, we can get some data on that. That would be helpful to me anyway. Sure. Um, we will look at, I'll talk to the, uh, the Director of Public Works, find out what the timeline is as far as an update on the tree health, tree canopy uh, data that was provided. Um, it may be something that we would be able to address potentially through grants from uh, CAL FIRE. Uh, they do urban forestry grants. Uh, I think it's an annual cycle. Um, they can be used for plantings, probably for other infrastructure related or, or survey planning type tasks. Um, one thing that I know is going to be problematic as far as tree canopy in the urban environment and primarily or particularly in the, uh, in the priority investment neighborhoods is uh, I'm thinking East Valley Parkway is one, um, the ability to irrigate uh, landscaping in the right-of-way is very difficult at this time on a lot of properties because there's not adjacent uh, landscaping on private property where we could work with a property owner to actually get some irrigation there. So that's another, uh, another thought that we've had is what can we do about going about maybe looking for grants to, um, to put irrigation and you know, water lines, water meters in if necessary. Uh, so it, it's been one of those items that we've kind of chewed on and toyed around with, don't know where it's going to go yet, and I don't know if the, uh, if the grants that we may have available are 
appropriate or if they're able to be used for that kind of thing. Um, but it's something that's definitely on our radar that would hopefully help to, you know, to get over that hurdle and uh, get, be able to provide the landscaping and the trees in areas where they're needed. And uh, as that could be undertaken as part of that effort to update the, uh, the status and the data as well. Commissioner Paul. Sure. W was Public Works invited today? They were. Uh, the director had another commitment for a, uh, what was it, the uh, Escondido um, Citizens Advisory Group on Homelessness. So he's not in, available here today. So, so, Kurt, do we have subpoena power? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, no. I mean I, we, we had questions about uh, their presentation to the city council. And so after we have this discussion tonight, we're still going to have questions about their presentation to the city council and, and quite frankly, their responsiveness to the community. Because there were also so, the questions about the... So I guess, so to just put that in the minutes, Mr. Commissioner Paul asked, we have subpoena power because we want information from the utility department. Thank you. Yeah, just to address that, Commissioner and, and other commissioners. Um, <clears throat> I don't think we have subpoena power per se, but I think what would be appropriate is for our interim director Feinstone to go back to city management and, and say that um, at the planning commission it was expressed that they would desire Director Goulart to come in and, and you wanted to have them just be here or give a presentation or what, yeah, what exactly? Well, have the data available that he provided to the council uh, and then we could have a conversation which would reflect both on, both on the council members comments, the city council members comments, which I have, I had written down at the time, um, as well as our own questions about, about his uh, presentation. Okay. But no, I, in my mind, he doesn't need to redo the presentation to us, but um, just to have that data handy would be good. Are you okay with that? Right, and he, he can send someone else in his place. Sure. So I, I have a question. How, how would we go about this? Do we continue this item so it doesn't have to be, what, re, I don't even think was noticed. It's just placed on there. Right, it's a current business item, so there's no need for public noticing. Okay. Um, I don't know the schedule so I can't say hey yeah the the next you know the ninth or I'm sorry the 11th or the 25th works I can't tell you that so I rather than saying well let's continue this we can just re-agendize it it doesn't require public notification it's just agendized as a current business item okay so I'd rather leave it that way but you know, but that said I think we'd be more than willing and interested in hearing what other concerns considerations comments the, the Commission has on this topic right now too yes and he indicated as much he, the, pres the presentation showed trees that are dead and missing, and that was a, that was my biggest question: is why are you presenting this as as this is the tree canopy in Escondido when there's trees right in front of my house that they're they're not they're not there, but they showed up on his report. Right, and I think there's also follow-on questions around the uh, like a, the communications and how dealing working with citizenry around uh, tree planting on private property and cost value, cost of water. That that piece of the conversation happened also with city council and had a, it was really productive. I thought it was it was good. Yeah, there, that's but, that's I think more of an educational campaign for the public. Right. Uh, with what the implications of planting a tree are, there's a lot of concerns. That the public has with regard to damage caused by tree roots, which that's a re that's a, you know the trees that were responsible for that had been removed, and that's why you have no trees in a lot of front yards and the like. Um, but different species don't create the same problems, so that's something that uh, that's an educational campaign um, that's necessary. And the other aspect of it as well is the concern with irrigation costs. Uh, we spoke with our uh, utilities director, he's also our deputy city manager, and the amount of water that it takes to irrigate a tree is less than a dollar a month. So once, and then once the tree is established, it really is almost nothing. So it's really very minimal. And it's, it's a matter of continuing to put that information out there um, and to provide that type of education to the public that, hey, 
we've got trees available. They, the Public Works folks and sdg &E both have trees available that they will provide. Um, I think that uh, one of the two will even plant them, and it's just a matter of maintaining and irrigating, which is pretty minimal as far as that cost. So uh, education, really, if I can say that again. Any other thoughts or comments on that? And we agreed that it will be agendized for a future meeting with the presence of uh, either the director of DPW or his designate. Or sure. Um, I'm thinking about timeline on it. And as we get towards, uh, I think March is when we're going to bring our climate action plan annual update to you guys. It might be, depending on, on what the meeting shape out is for the next couple months, it might be good to group that all together. Uh, we can talk about that um, at our next meeting, and we'll talk about it internally. But I think that maybe having that full kind of discussion would be a good idea. Um, and then the, uh, the individuals from Public Works could be potentially available for that full, full discussion as well. OK. Anything else on that? Nope. All right. I think. Oral communications from the public? Seeing none, I don't think. Uh, planning commissioners, any comments, agenda items, news? Commissioner Paul. So I just wanted to ask about uh, signage on new businesses. Do, do the new businesses usually open first or do the signs go up first? What, is there any order to that? Not necessarily. No, it can be done either way. So um, if this is something we want to discuss in detail, we can put something on the agenda on it. But yeah, really, as long as a, a project is in the process and has building permits for their tenant improvements, they can do signage at that point. Okay, Any other? Commissioner Serato. Um, what is the current status of the work plan? Like, just because I haven't heard of it since our meeting with the city council. Sure. Um, so as part of the work that Veronica has been helping out with, on, she's really going to be my go-to on, uh, on our advanced planning tasks. Um, and as you see, she's pretty amazing at that work. So um, what a, part of that has been looking at the, uh, at the work plan. And we'll be looking at that again in the in the new year and seeing what adjustments may need to be made. Um, there's stuff that I think we have checked off. There's stuff we definitely haven't that we're behind on. Um, you know, circumstances come up and we are throwing curveballs, right? But uh, but we'll look at that again and reprioritize if necessary, and uh, hopefully get some uh, some more momentum now that we've got uh, getting our staff back and have the ability to to handle some things. So. So we could see a, perhaps that could be an agenda item down the road when you're ready to sure. re-share that with us of and course. update it or reprioritize whatever needs to be done. All right. Any other comments from commissioners? Hearing none. Director's report. I remember this time. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no meeting on the 28th. I wish everyone a very happy holidays. Uh, enjoy your holidays, whatever you decide to do. If you go out of town, please be safe. Um, and if we are holding an, our next meeting, maybe the 11th, I believe it is, or the 9th, 11th, 11th, 11th of January, we're shooting for with an item on SB9, though I'm not positive with the holidays coming and uh, vacations on different people's ends that we're going to hit that. So if it's not then, then it'll be the uh, 25th. If we do have a meeting on the 9th, reminder about the, um, the new mask mandate that's going to be in, in place at that point. So that's all. All right. Uh, can we entertain? Can we, enter we can entertain from the public, right? Yeah, I think that's fine. Sure. If you don't mind uh, coming up and introducing yourself, please. If you don't mind filling out a speaker slip afterwards as well, that'd be great. Thank you.
I want to thank uh, the staff that has reached out to community uh, organizations that are focusing on this kind of thing here locally. And uh, I appreciate it. And we hope in the future that we would have a community uh, coalition, a committee for housing built by the community, built of the community for this very issue. So I just wanted to make that input and thank you for having the reach out to us. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if you don't mind filling out a speaker thing, that'd be great. Yeah. All right. Commissioners, thank you very much. I wish you all the very best top of the holidays. And uh, we'll see you in January, if not before. Enjoy. Adjourned.